I thought we could start with the basics, you know, if you could tell me a bit about who and what is Salt Money. Yeah, sure. Um, Salt Money is a screamo band. We're from Mianjin or Brisbane in Australia. Um, we play like chaotic post-hardcore, metalcore influenced screamo. Um, and we've been doing it for a couple of years now. We just put out our first debut full length. Eternity's EP came out in uh, 2020. So how did it all get started for you? How do you uh, start a screamo band in Brisbane? Yeah, so Eternities came out in 2020, you're right, but I think we wrote it in 2019. Um, so our first two EPs, like Eternities and First Breath, we actually wrote and recorded them together as like sibling records. And then um, we put them out, like we put Eternities out first and then waited a while to put out um, First Breath. But the songs were all recorded in the same session in 2019. Um it took a while of rewriting um, vocals over and over again um, until I was happy with the vocals, but all the instrumentals are the instrumental tracks from back in 2019. Um, so yeah, I, I guess we've been around a little while with a few member changes and stuff, but now I think um, this is like, now that we got the full length out, this is kind of the time that things are really picking up, I guess. How was the beginning of the band? I mean, there was, you know, uh, in 2020, there also came this thing called COVID. So how was that time for a new band? Yeah, I mean, um, we were very fortunate at that time. Four of the five members of the band, we all lived together in the same house. So um, we were able to keep like writing and um, keep like, I think, creative conversations open. I think it's those creative conversations that people really lacked, like that connection, uh, which we were really fortunate to have because we just so happened to be living in the same house. So we were isolating together. Um, our lockdowns here in Brisbane uh, were not so bad compared to the rest of the world. So we were very fortunate in that regard. Um, and so I guess that meant that we were able to sort of get out a little bit, but shows were still cancelled for ages. Um, but, you know, we weren't really taking it that seriously at the time. We were just making, I guess the way we've always done it is we're just making the music because we wanted to make it. So um, COVID never really got in the way of that. We were still just making the music we wanted to make. How was then the writing process uh, of Love of My Life album? You know, you guys living in the same house and all. Yeah, yeah. So our old guitarist, Luke, wrote most of the instrumental parts. Um, and then with help from Michael, our old drummer, um, they basically wrote it together in, in this house. And then, um, well, the instrumentals, that is. And then we we took the, their ideas and kind of fleshed them out. Um, so we had one day of studio time booked. And the plan was for Luke, Michael, and Jasper, our bassist, to record the instrumental tracks live in the room together, no quick track in that one day. And we also decided on that day that we were going to add a new member, Sean, another guitarist. So when Sean joined, like Sean joined literally the day that we were recording the record. So um, once we got those like skeleton tracks from, from the instrumental day, um, Sean added their guitar parts and then I took it and kind of kept that as my little baby for ages. And I kept writing and rewriting vocals sometimes like three times until I felt like the record really captured what I wanted it to capture. And then, you know, when that's done, then you're like, cool, record's done, but it still doesn't come out for like nine more months because you got to organize like vinyl and like a release and stuff like that, which is, that's frustrating. But yeah, I guess the record's quite old now is what I'm trying to say. Even though it just came out, it feels it feels old for us, the band. But I guess that's what every band says. Yeah. 
talking about the lyrics, uh, would you mind uh, maybe sharing background story of uh, one or two songs? Okay. Um, oh, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Let's yeah, let's <laughs> let's just take one then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess Overplayed's the single, right? So we can talk about that. Um, that song kind of came about as, I guess it's like the the most <clears throat> outwardly facing song on the record. A lot of the song is internal and Overplayed is, is the most external. Um, maybe a critique on the way that I see a lot of... Um, a lot of the other heavy music bands or punk scene, whatever you may want to call it. Um, and a certain level of like um, forced sincerity, which I found kind of gross or like maybe not forced sincerity, but like, um, like uh, I'm at a loss for words, but maybe like, pretending to be more sincere than you really are. And I wanted to write a really sincere record. And so I guess internally I was grappling with that. And then I saw the outside world maybe grappling with it too. Um, so I guess that was my like most angry moment on the record is where I'm sort of shouting out at the rest of the world being like, can you be a little bit more sincere? Can you be a little bit more of yourself? That's kind of what that song's about. And at the same time, I guess it's like uh, implicitly urging me to be a bit more of myself too. As I understand, your kind of Australian tour is now done. So what's the next step? Australian tour finished. And now we are writing new music for a new record, like a new LP that should hopefully come out by the end of the year, if we can get our shit together. Um, we have a couple of little singles that are coming before then. Um, and we're, we're doing a Japanese tour in June, July. So, uh, at the moment that that's all that's on the cards right now, but obviously we want to get around to the rest of the world too. So like, we want to try and do that as soon as we possibly can, but you know, it's tough when you're a small band. Let's go a bit back to the music. Uh, screamo is very interesting genre for me, but uh, for you, like, what is the meaning of screamo for you personally? Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's something that's always been around in the world that I live in, and I guess um, I sort of found the genre maybe in like 2009 or maybe 2010 or something like that, and then really started to fall in love with it maybe five years after that. Um, but I guess uh, I, I really enjoy performing in Salt Money as, as a screamer vocalist because it feels like nothing else in this world. Um, and I feel like when you listen to screamer bands or the good ones, I should say, not the shit ones, but the good ones, when you listen to a good screamer band, well, that's unlike anything else in this world too. Or if you get to a show for a good screamo band, that might be a day that you remember forever. Um, I would love if my band could be, you know, if my band could put on a show that somebody would remember forever. Um, so I guess that's why we're a screamo band. Yeah. What bands would you say uh, have had an influence on you? Okay. Um, Bit of name dropping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The number one that I always name drop in interviews is uh, I Have Dreams. That's like the the band that I think Salt Money kind of sounds like, uh, or at least I'd hope so. Obviously, we do it in a different way, but that's one band that I remember myself and Luke, when we talked about starting this band, we were like, let's make it sound like I Have Dreams. Um. And then I guess just all the, all the Screamo classics, right? Like Jerome's Dream, um, or like Orchid. Um, I also like a lot of old metalcore. So I'm always like 
maybe kidding myself, but I think that there's some like poison the well type parts or some like seven angels, seven plagues type parts. Um, so yeah, maybe it's like a lot of screamo and a bit of metalcore in the blender. How is the scene back there in Brisbane? It's yeah, it's an amazing scene over here. Uh, we are so lucky. Um, it's very small, but it's very active. And because it's so active, um, I guess everybody's kind of pushing each other, not in like a, not in a competitive way, but in a supportive way, everybody's like encouraging each other to, to keep writing music and keep putting stuff out, keep putting on shows. So, um, I might shout out some of the locals, um, bands that I think everyone should check out. Um, so in terms of screamo bands, we have like Hanoi traffic, we have blind girls, um, and those are, I guess the screamo bands and there's some more like hardcore bands. Um, there's like emo bands like Naki soul. Um, there is like digital hardcore super death. Um, we're all like. We're all friends. We all really, like uh, work on each other's projects and share creative ideas. So um, yeah, the Mangin scene or Brisbane scene is is going really good at the moment. And it's kind of odd where it's a city of only like two million people um, in a country of very few people, and we're super isolated. Um, so it's it's tough to maintain a scene, but I think we're it's the healthiest it's ever been in my lifetime, um, and it feels the most exciting, um, especially considering that like I guess the, the two other major cities in Australia are Sydney and Melbourne, and I mean they're fucking ages away. Like <laughs> this is a really big country with very few people on it. So like, um, Sydney doesn't really have much of a screamo scene yet, but when we went there on our tour, uh, it really blew us away. And I know that there's some new shit that's about to pop in Sydney. So hopefully Sydney screamo is picking up. Um, and I know that there's some people who are really passionate putting on shows and, and starting bands. So. Sydney's got hope. And then Melbourne Screamo has been big forever. Like it's, I guess Melbourne has always been the center of Australian Screamo until very, very recently where this Meandrian scene has kind of started to, um, to pick it up.